Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today is part five of our five-part series on Effortless Everything. And if you want to know more about the program and join me for Effortless Everything, beginning in September 2024, then go to michaelneal.org forward slash effortless everything. And the, the fifth month of the program, so it'll be January 2025 when we do it, is called The Best Year of Your Life. And we're going to be taking a look at w- what, what actually makes a year a good year or a bad year in our memory, in our thinking, and are there things we can do that make it more likely that the year ahead will be the best year of our life? Or as I, I, I one, of, one of the early books I read about this that I really loved was called Your Best Year Yet. And, you know, what if the year ahead was your best year yet, was the best year of your life so far? And if you look back on your life, I can pretty much guarantee you that if you were going to break it down into your best years and your worst years, your best years were actually the years where you were the most engaged. They're the years where you, you it, maybe not that you felt the best throughout the year, because there might often, when we're really engaged with life, that brings up a lot of disruption and it, it can bring up a lot of different feelings, not all of which are wonderful. But it was probably one of the most feelingful years of your life. You really experienced the fullness of life. And chances are it also involved some cool things happening in your life, some of which you may have been deliberate about and set out to have happen but some of which took you by surprise. I was talking to a, a client earlier today, actually, and, and they were talking about that they, you know, that they, 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 they'd love to do a podcast called, well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> and, and that can sound like, oh God, a nightmare. I didn't see that coming. But actually what, what, what she was pointing to and what I thought was great about it was so often the best things in our life, we didn't see that coming. Like we meet somebody and, oh my God, I didn't see that relationship coming. We, something cool opportunity presents itself and it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Something really unexpected and initially we think horrible happens. We, we get injured, we get sick, somebody we love gets sick and we think, oh, I didn't see that coming. But actually what comes from it is a deeper, richer experience of life, is a much needed change of direction in life. And so when we look at what have been the best years of my life, you'll start to notice, oh, in the best years of my life, I, I was the most engaged. I was the most present. I was the most feelingful. Often when people talk about the best years of their life, they, 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 they talk about them with a sense of wonder because what happened in those years was felt almost miraculous. Like, oh my God, where is this coming from? I don't even understand how this could be happening. This is beyond what I expected. Now, because it feels like, well, it's nothing to do with me, it's just happening, that it, it might seem like, well, it's kind of strange to set out to have the best year of your life if it's not about the year where I get the most stuff, make the most money, and have the most success. In fact, when you talk to a lot of super successful people, they often talk about the best years of their life being when they were just starting out, when it was still hard, when they were... Um, I remember I, I watched this uh, Lenny Kravitz documentary, and, and he was kind of talking about how some of the best years of his life were when he was starting out and, you know, him and his new wife and his new baby and seven musicians were all sharing a, a small apartment in New York trying to make it. And he's telling you this from this amazing mansion in France, talking about his amazing retreat center in Brazil, and, and, and yet he's talking about that period of his life with such fondness. Because... That was the year where there was a sense of possibility. There was a sense of, I wonder what could happen. 
There was a sense of, I don't even know what we're going to do next week, let alone next year. And so how do you cultivate that? Well, partly by, by recognizing it, by recognizing how, how it works, by looking at your own life and really seeing for yourself, what, what do the best years of my life looking back have in common? And what's in there that I can encourage, cultivate, replicate. But more simply, if you want to just start looking at having the year ahead be the best year of your life, just engage more fully with whatever it is that you're doing. Just open yourself back up to the possibility of things happening that aren't what you expect. Let go of your certainty that you not only know what's going to happen, you know how it'll feel. And open back up to the unknown. Open back up to the place of pure possibility that is the reality of life all the time. But we get into routines and expectations and we almost start shrinking our lives down to fit what we expect. Well, what if you don't do that? What if you take the limiters off? What if you open yourself back up to anything? What if you take a look in the direction of, wouldn't it be cool? Like, wouldn't it be cool if I did this? Wouldn't it be cool if I did that? Not as a goal, but just to encourage that sense of possibility and, and, and almost hopefulness within yourself. Not, not specifically that this thing will happen, but that the feeling of possibility is a place that I can live and that the excitement of engaging in real time with my life is going to be so much more rewarding than planning it all out and following my plan and trying to do things the right way and make them happen. The best year of your life will always be filled with surprises. It will always be marked with the unexpected. It will be noted by your level of aliveness. So if you want to play with this, play with that. Take a look. What do the best years of your life to date have in common? From that, given all the things that were idiosyncratic and unique to that, what do you notice that you could begin doing more of or start doing less of right now? What would you love to see happen in the year ahead? And how can you engage more fully with whatever it is that you're doing now? Letting go of the idea that you already know what's going to happen and you already know how it's going to feel. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and may the year ahead be the best year of your life. I'll talk with you soon. <laughs>